Honestly, there's no thought in my mind whatsoever. I could probably end the sentence right there and it would make a lot of sense. There's never a thought in my mind. There's no thought or question in my mind whatsoever that I would do a Deadpool costume at some point. It's gonna happen at some point, but your boy's just broke. So I can't afford to even purchase a costume, let alone purchase the materials to craft and make a costume and ultimately fail at it, and then purchase the materials again to try again. But hey, it's on the list. Hey, what up, I'm Miles, and welcome back to episode two of Cosplayer Reacts. There's gotta be a more smooth way to hit that intro or something. Anyway, if you saw the last video, we reacted to the new Superman suit going for Superman Legacy. And in this video, we are reacting to the new suits in Deadpool 3, Deadpool and the Wolverine. If you're new or unfamiliar with this series, hey, what's up, I'm Miles. God bless your soul, I hope you make it through this video. I am a cosplayer and a professional illustrator and character concept artist. And in this series, I like to break down, go over, review, and talk about different costumes, costume designs, character concepts and stuff like that in all of the new modern media stuff. Anyway, welcome to Cosplayer Reacts Episode 2 and today we are breaking down, going over, reviewing, looking over the designs of the costumes for Deadpool and Wolverine in Deadpool and Wolverine. God, that was a choppy intro. So, if you are unfamiliar, Deadpool and the Wolverine is the third installment in the Deadpool series. This movie comes to theaters on July 26th and has officially been named in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as part of that cohesive story, so it is part of the MCU. I believe at this point we're in phase 5 and this movie would be a very key player in that phase. But I honestly have no idea what phase we're in. We know that this movie has a huge focus on the TVA, the multiverse, different timeline branches, and all of that messy stuff within the multiverse. We know that the Deadpool in the movie is the Deadpool that we know, the one that we followed from Deadpool 1 and 2. The Wolverine, however, is a different Wolverine, a different Logan, because obviously in Logan, spoiler, he died. So this is a Wolverine from a different separate universe, a separate timeline branch that has seemingly been destroyed or obliterated. Now, with the basic synopsis out of the way, let's get into what you're actually watching for this video the suit breakdowns. First, starting off with Deadpool, he gets a bit of an upgraded and alternate design from his first two appearances in the Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2 movies. It seems like they've just been upgraded and modifying the design from the start and just tweaking little things along the way. And honestly, I think that's the right way to go because in Deadpool 1, they struck absolute gold and got his suit designed to be borderline perfect, a perfect mix of comic accuracy and modern representation. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Wolverine, on the other hand, is a completely new and fresh look, something we have never seen before in live action from the Logan character, and a concept that people have been begging for in live action, his classic comic colors, to be brought into a new modern design. It is definitely a fresh new MCU style look that does remain true to the OG stylistic choices and design, of course, with the colors, lines, all that different padding from the OG comic design and so on. But again, we'll talk on that later. All right, let's get into the breakdowns. Let's start off with DP himself. Starting off very simple, he has a two tone color scheme with the main color being red with secondaries being black, same as the first two movies. There's different highlights around the suit of silver that pop up in some areas as well as his utility belt being a very faded like umber or really dark brown. But given that that's an accessory and I don't really think there's enough gray or silver to constitute it being a tertiary color, we're just going to call those accents. Speaking from the design standpoint itself, like we said in Deadpool 1 they struck absolute gold with a modern interpretation of a classic Deadpool suit. They basically take the classic colors and basic design of a normal standard Deadpool suit that you would imagine and just modernize it and by doing that they add more fabric, they add different textures and they make it look more realistic as opposed to just the standard lycra or spandex or skin tight suit that you would assume they wear in the comics. This is obviously what they did for Deadpool 1 with his suit being a very thick fabric that looks almost like a mix between a denim and a weird plexi fabric and different elements like the shoulders being leather and using combat utility gloves and boots. Moving through to Deadpool 2 and 3 they've kept with that exact same thought process and design style, using realistic textures and materials to turn a comic accurate design into modern realism. The main bulk of the suit is very similar to the first two. The major differences being the pattern on the chest and the neck collar in this installment are altered. The shoulders are still the same leather design as they have been in the first two movies. He also still dons his iconic gun strap that starts with a thicker portion on the left hand shoulder and moves all the way down across his body to connect down to his utility belt. The utility belt has been updated and altered slightly from the past appearances. It does 
does still have that same design of the bulk and having those cargo pouches around it. However, the emblem and buckle on the front is now the classic comic Deadpool logo, which I just think is a really nice touch. The arms opt for not having too much detail and just sticking with that primary red. And as we move down, he looks like he dons the same type of combat gloves that he's used in the first two movies, along with arm and wrist straps. What these are for, I have no clue, but it does add a little bit of contrast onto the arm, which is a nice touch. Moving down to the pants, we have a bit of a change from the first two designs as the black from the midsection of the rib cage moves down almost into like a comma skirt pattern around his waistline. Again, not like a major change, but a nice fresh look. Down at the knees and boots is where we really start getting into more changes. The knee pads have been changed to be a primary red that matches his suit with a black outline. Along with his boots being that same strong primary red with having black accents that go down and across the boot in an interesting pattern. The boots also look very thick and almost like an armor plating. It looks like a different material from the rest of his suit and they definitely bulk up a little bit more. And it looks like they plate right over just a standard black combat boot that we've seen him wear before. Now moving all the way back up to that beautiful smile, the mask. This is pretty much the exact same as the first two. We have the same mask, the same little dimple in the back, the same two lenses, and the same two white eyes that show the expression. The overall red color of the suit has had a significant saturation boost, looking a lot brighter and more prominent, bringing out that more comic-esque era and giving us a more comic feeling. I will say personally, I'm more of a fan of the faded red of the first Deadpool, but this isn't a bad red color. Now let's talk about the weaponry because obviously it's Deadpool, he's chock full of it. First two are super iconic, it's his backsword katana as those go back into a katana holder. He also carries his two iconic pistols, both of which having holsters on the leg, one leg only having one strap, the other having two. I'm a huge fan of the asymmetry. I like how they do that. And then down over to his right leg, he does have a smaller blade tucked into his boot. Along with all of that, he does also have his utility belt that could be filled with a bunch of different knickknacks, tricks, funny things that Deadpool would of course have. But overall, there's not much to say about this suit that we haven't said about the first two, because like I said, they struck absolute gold with that first design and it was just small little changes or alterations as we moved through the year until we got to this one which again is still perfect. Now let's move on to my man Wolverine because he has a completely new design and I really want to dive into it. One of the biggest complaints of live action Wolverine in the years, the suit. All throughout the X-Men series he's never really had a good design in terms of his suit. They've always tried to keep it a little darker, a little bit more realistic, a little bit more grounded, and while I respect that to a certain extent, just give us a nice Wolverine comic suit. And here we have a nice Wolverine comic suit, perfectly modernized into a new MCU movie. This suit also follows the two-tone color pattern with the primary being a very strong yellow and the secondary being a deep navy blue, obviously Wolverine's classic comic color. There's very small slight accents of both black and silver through his suit but I'm counting the black as more of an undersuit or under fabric that's between his arms or on his glove and again the silver highlights are not enough to be a tertiary color it's more like just accents and highlights. The overall look of the suit honestly looks like they just took a classic comic Wolverine design, popped them into live action, and just put realistic textures on it. And that's honestly the best way I could describe most of the suit, is it follows the exact same design and concept as a normal Wolverine suit would, but it just has those realistic fibers, those realistic textures, that feeling, that material. The design up top features a new collar-like design that has a little slit right at the Adam's apple, and it moves down in this nice symmetrical pattern that goes down the center of his chest. On the two trap muscles that are on either side of his neck, he does have two blue triangles that wrap up from the back and sit nicely at the bottom of the collarbone. That same color is tucked underneath his armpits and it continues on the pattern all the way down to his obliques going into the abdomen section. The blue on the torso is featured more on the side of the suit that covers most of the oblique muscles on the abdomen versus the front pack. And it also has three yellow highlights that are moving at a downward angle on either side. The sleeves are two-tone as well with the outer being yellow and the inner being that navy blue. I would assume that the inner part wraps around like a normal sleeve and it just cuts in half on both sides of the arms. The shoulders on top again are a different material. It doesn't look like it's fabric. It looks like it is physically an armor piece, an armor plating that is wrapped on top of the suit. This armor shoulder plating is primarily that deep navy blue, but it does have the yellow and silver highlights wrapping around the outer edge. Having these 3D elements of like the armor plating on top of a fabric suit is really, really cool, not just for a design element, but also for in practicality when you're moving, it offers a different type of movement. Obviously when you're moving in suit, fabric moves with your body, but armor doesn't. Armor moves around your body. So it's a nice contrast and a nice different way to kind of see how it all works. And it's just interesting. Basically what I'm saying is, 
armor plus fabric equals cool. This same armor plating is repeated down by his gauntlets that go from his wrist all the way up to his elbow that are cut in a triangular shape. The gloves look like an interesting mix between a utility combat glove and like a motocross design. The fingers look to be padded, but it does look like just to be a utility work glove, or at least that's the texture it looks like. Basic two-tone pattern again, primary blue with a little slit of yellow right between the pointer and the thumb, with of course the three silver slits on the knuckles for the blades to shoot out. Moving down to his pants again, the primary yellow with the two blue navy panels on either side that are repeating that same pattern from the obliques. The knee pads are the same yellow color, but do look to be a different type of material. Again, probably that 3D armor that the shoulders and gauntlets are made out of, as well as the boots that go right under them that are made of that same armor. The boots are a really nice contrast as it is that darker color that as it breaks right off of the light color from the knee. Moving back up, we have the nice belt. It looks to just be a standard aesthetic belt for design purposes that goes around the suit. The belt again is a primarily yellow design with the two blue panels on either side mirroring both the obliques and the thighs that have the same pattern. On the middle of the belt is where it gets a little bit interesting because we have a black panel with a red X and obviously knowing Wolverine that has to mean it is an X-Men design. So we're probably going to hear a lot more about this Wolverine, his story and where he came from but it's very clear cut to say that he was or is part of an X-Men and it might serve to be a new introduction for the X-Men into the MCU. Either that or it's just a cool red X. I don't know. The suit overall looks to be a very interesting texture. My best guess would be it's like a cargo utility texture that is worn in like tactical military gear. But it looks a little bit thicker. I'm trying to pinpoint exactly what I think it might be, but I'm just like, like picturing it, right? I can't think of the actual word or what the fabric is called. Nylon? Is it nylon? I think nylon. That might be it. Now, looking at both suits overall past the design, we do also have the high detailing and linear patterns that Marvel tends to do with their suits. And again, it's not really a bad thing. I don't know why people see a bunch of little lines on a suit or detailing pattern that follows like muscle texture and immediately assume it's bad. I actually think in these suits, it's done really well. On Deadpool, he doesn't have that many. It looks like just standard fabric lines that would be on any sort of stitched suit. Wolverine is where they went a bit crazy on it, but again, I think it still works because it's faded down so much and it just gives the suit a little bit more texture. We have these nice linear lines on both sides of his chest that move down his traps, around the pecs, and down through the abs. And I like the fact that they're not just straight lines, they actually wrap around the muscle. We also have lines that complement pretty much every part of the suit. We have a horse horizontal line that goes across the collar, two more that go around the neck piece, lines that move down and shape the shoulder that are on the arms, as well as down the actual arm to replicate the stitching. And then of course at the legs, it's the same kind of deal. There's just a whole bunch of lines that follow the vertical design of the leg, as well as horizontal lines to break it up. Same thing with the knee, we have this nice like weird abdomen pattern on the kneecap. I like the fact that when they do this detailing, it's very consistent. With Deadpool, it's minimalistic. They throw it in a couple places. And when they do throw it in, it complements the muscle, right? It complements the shape complements the direction it does that with wolverine they throw a little bit more they go a bit more crazy on it but it still makes sense it'll follow the muscle design it'll follow the shape of his body but they also like to do this nice diagonal stroke around different points like at his legs at his shoulders and of course at the collarbone these are all just minute things that don't really matter but you would notice it that they weren't there so with those breakdowns out of the way what are my final thoughts on these suits i honestly don't think that they could have done any better like these are gorgeous looking suits and the fact that the set photos that we got months before the trailer that showed these suits showed them as glorious as they were is a testament to what they actually are i like the fact that they really didn't hold back whatsoever they didn't try to go minimalistic they did not try to modernize it too far they literally just pulled it right out of the comic, turned it into some realistic fabric, threw some armor on it, and it was good. And I think over the years, that's what we've been learning is what you should do when you're making a live action adaptation of a comic suit. At least if you wanna do the classic suit. Now listen, I'm all for changing suits and giving new alternate designs, especially when you move into live action. But if you're gonna go for the comic design and you really wanna be accurate to it, just rip it right out of the comics like this. That's one of the reasons why I love the final swing suit in No Way Home so much and why it will always top the Stark suit. Not that the Stark suit isn't great, but it's because that one was ripped right out of the classic Spidey comic design, but modernized in a realistic way. There definitely is a balance for modernizing comic suits, and I think that we are finally getting to the point where we're understanding it, where the suit designers, the costume designers, the set designers, the directors, they're finally getting it, where they're giving us more comic accurate suits that don't look super campy. They actually look realistic. Anyway, my final rating for both of these suits will be a collective 
9 out of 10 for both of them, and that's pretty high praise. But the fact that I'm an aggressive optimist means that I'm always going to rate something pretty high, unless it just sucks. But yeah, obviously I am super excited for Deadpool and the Wolverine to come out July 26th. I really hope I get this video up before then, because I'm currently doing like 300 projects all at once, including different character illustration posters for both Deadpool and Wolverine for the premiere of the movie. If you want to check those out when they're posted, they'll be on my art Instagram, Monkey Art, and available for prints on my Etsy whenever they're done. I really do like this series, and I want to keep doing more breakdowns, more suit breakdowns of different types of suits that you see throughout media whether it's new movies coming out, old movies that have already come out, TV shows, video games, whatever they might be. I want to keep doing it because I like this Cosplayer React series. So leave a comment down below letting me know what types of suits you want me to react to, break down, go into, and maybe if I would change them, what I would do differently about them. So yeah, leave a comment down below. What's next for episode three? Anyway, thank you again so much for watching. Peace and love, do good things, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah, Spider-Man!